Welcome to the Why Did the Mormon Church Change Its Name video. Okay, so Jesus Christ told the Nephites that the name of their church should be under his name. Jesus Christ basically should be in the name of the church. So it's 3rd Nephi, chapter 27, uh, in the Book of Mormon, a Mormon scripture. And how be it my church, save it be called in my name? For if a church be called in Moses' name, then it be Moses' church. Or if it be called in the name of a man, then it be the church of a man. But if it be called in my name, and that's Jesus Christ, then it is my church. If it so be that they are built upon my gospel. So the name of Jesus Christ should be in the name of the church. Okay, so from April 6, 1830 to May 3rd, 1834, it's about four years the name of the Mormon church was the Church of Christ. It was much more simple. That was the original name. April 6, 1830 is the day the church was founded. So the name was Church of Christ. And the name Church of Christ was actually given to Joseph Smith in a revelation in Doctrine and Covenants 20, uh, verse 1. It was a revelation on church organization and government given through the prophet Joseph Smith. The complete revelation, known at the time as the Articles and Covenants, was likely recorded soon after April 6, 1830, the day the church was organized. So soon, af soon after April 6, 1830, he got a revelation for the name of the church, and the name was Church of Christ. So here is the actual scripture, uh, Doctrine and Covenants, chapter 20, verse 1. The rise of the Church of Christ... In these last days being 1,830 years since the coming of our Lord. That's 1830. The rise of the Church of Christ. That was the name given to Joseph by revelation. And the picture above, we have the title page for the Book of Commandments. That was the predecessor to the Doctrine and Covenants. That came first. And uh, the Book of Commandments was published in 1833. Uh, during the time frame when they were using the name Church of Christ. And you can look here on the title page. It says Book of Commandments for the Government of the Church of Christ. So there it gives the name Church of Christ organized according to law on the 6th of April, 1830. The first edition of the Doctrine and Covenants didn't happen until 1835. So one year approximately uh, after they were using the name Church of Christ. And here are three other sources where you can verify that the original name of the Mormon church was indeed the Church of Christ. Okay, so May 3rd, 1834 to April 26, 1838, they changed the name of the church. And it was now to be known as the Church of the Latter-day Saints. Now, you'll notice that they deleted the name of Christ from the official name of the church. The Church of the Latter-day Saints, no, no name of Christ in the church, so they're no longer following the command in the Book of Mormon. So, in a priesthood conference presided over by Joseph Smith, a motion passed by unanimous voice that the church be known as the Church of the Latter-day Saints. Church of the Latter-day Saints, no name of Christ in there. Uh, you, can, you can see this in the Evening and the Morning Star newspaper, uh, May 1834. Uh, Joseph wanted to change the name of the church because other Protestant churches were using the name uh, the Church of Christ, so they probably had claim on it. And here is proof that they did change the name. It says, House of the Lord... Built by the Church of the Latter-day Saints, A.D. 1834. This is on the Kirtland Temple in Ohio, which, which was finished on March 27, 1836. So it, it would be in the right time frame for when the name of the church was the Church of the Latter-day Saints. And it's on the Mormon's own temple, the Kirtland Temple. Another proof here is the 1835 edition title page of the Doctrine and Covenants. That's Mormon scripture. If you remember on the Book of Commandments, it said Church of Christ. Well, this is the first edition of the Doctrine and Covenants, 1835. 
And it says on the title page, The Church of the Latter-day Saints, carefully selected from the revelations of God. So there it is. It's on their temple. Uh, it's on the title page of the DNC, Doctrine and Covenants, 1835 edition, The Church of the Latter-day Saints. Uh, no name of Christ in there. And here is a good source by Richard Lloyd Anderson where you can verify that they did change the name of the church to the Church of the Latter-day Saints. Okay, so we come up to the current name of the church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh, this name was established on April 26, 1838, and it goes up to the current time, 2019. So you'll notice that Christ's name is put back in. It's now the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, not just the Church of the Latter-day Saints. Here is the scripture or the revelation given through the prophet Joseph Smith at Far West, Missouri, April 26, 1838. It's chapter 115 of the current edition of the Doctrine and Covenants. It says, For thus shall my church be called in the last days, even the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Thus shall my church be called the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So this is a change here in 1838. This is in the current edition of Doctrine and Covenants 115, but in the current edition of Doctrine and Covenants chapter 20, when the church was first established in 1830, about eight years before this, it said the name of the church was the Church of Christ. So we have a conflict in the current edition of the Doctrine and Covenants. One chapter in, uh, that was given in 1830 said the name of the church was the Church of Christ, and we've shown evidence that, yes, that was the name at that time. And now another passage in the Doctrine and Covenants in 1838 that says the name is different. So we have a conflict. And here we have the 1844 edition of the Doctrine and Covenants, and it reflects the name change. This is about nine years from the previous edition, the first edition, which was 1835. It says the Doctrine and Covenants of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So again, in the church's own scripture, we have a new name, puts the name of Christ back in the church, and this is still the current name today. Okay, another passage in the Book of Mormon, Mosiah 5, verse 8. This is a Mormon scripture. There is no other name given whereby salvation cometh. Therefore, I would that ye should take upon you the name of Christ. I would that ye should take upon you the name of Christ. And then we read that other passage in the Book of Mormon that said uh, the name of the church should have the name of Christ in it. But the Mormon church kind of shot themselves in the foot as far as uh, wanting to be called the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints because they ran some ads in the 1970s and 1980s like this one. This was a, an ad on TV, and it gives the current name of the church, but then it says Mormon, quote, unquote, in fairly large text. So they were actively promoting the name of Mormon, saying, you know, that the, the members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints can be called Mormons, or you just can call it the Mormon church. And here's another TV ad from the same time period. It has the words, the Mormons, in very large text, even bigger, even bigger than the name of the church. So they were advertising the fact that their name was the Mormons. And here's another TV advertisement, and it says the Mormons again in very large text. So it's kind of weird that they were using the Mormons in their ads because there was plenty of people that spoke that they shouldn't, they shouldn't use the words the Mormons. Uh, one example here is the prophet George Albert Smith in General Conference, April 1948. He says, don't let the Lord down by calling this the Mormon church. He didn't call it the Mormon church. 
It is all right for us to believe in the Book of Mormon. He expects us to do that, to do that. But he told us what to call the church. And there was other Mormon general authorities, you know, prophets and apostles that said the same thing. We shouldn't call it the Mormon church. Yet in the 1970s and 80s, they ran all these ads that said the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, a.k.a. the Mormons. And here is another example from the Apostle Harold B. Lee, November 1971. It was shortly before he became the prophet of the church. This is, this is in the church uh, magazine, The Enzyme. When the Lord revealed the name by which the church was to be called, he used some interesting expressions. He did not say Mormon church. He did not say LDS church. But the clear, firm, unequivocal statement, even the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and, and in another scripture, the Church of Christ, which he does not mention, some of the general authorities may not even be aware of that. You have to kind of delve into this stuff. So there's another example, you know, we shouldn't be saying Mormon church, but yet in their own ads, uh, a few years later, they're saying the Mormons. Okay, another example from the member missionary class instructor's guide. Member missionaries, talking to your friends about the church, it says, we feel that some may be misled by the too frequent use of the term Mormon church. Some people investigating the church may be misled by the too frequent use of the term Mormon church, and yet the same time frame in 1982, the Mormon church was running these TV ads all the time, saying, we are, yeah, we are the church of Jesus Christ, but we are the Mormons. And jumping to the year 2011, the church started started another advertising campaign, the I Am a Mormon campaign. This is 2011, mormon.org. I Am a Mormon. All right, so here's another ad uh, for the same campaign. They plaster the side of buses with I Am a Mormon, mormon.org. So they're not really listening to the former uh, prophets and apostles and even their own scriptures, they're still saying, yeah, we are Mormons. And in 2014, only five years ago, the church put out a documentary which was widely distributed, and it was called Meet the Mormons. So they're still doing the same thing that they were doing in the 70s and 80s. Meet the Mormons. It doesn't say meet the members of the Church of Jesus Christ. So nowadays, the church is trying to get away from using the Mormons or the Mormon church. Even though they ran all these ads to the world saying, yes, we are the Mormons. <laughs> so it says leaders of the LDS church in recent years have placed great emphasis on the full name of the church and have resisted the application of informal or shortened names including the Mormon Church or the LDS Church and the Church of the Latter-day Saints, which was actually the name of the church, Church of the Latter-day Saints for a while. <laughs> we don't want to be called that anymore, even though we ran a whole bunch of ads saying, yeah, we are the Mormons. And the church also said that when a shortened, shortened reference is needed, the terms the church or the church of Jesus Christ are encouraged. This is in the church newspaper, the Desert News 2018. Instead of the Mormons, they want the church or the church of Jesus Christ or members of the church of Jesus Christ. So why does the modern Mormon church want to do this? Well, here is probably the reason. This was in an, in an article in the New York Times. 2001, but it still applies to today, I think. This is Jan Ships, an expert on the LDS Church, and she suggested that the continuing efforts of the church to emphasize its full name reflects the long-standing desire of members of the church, I'd say the leaders of the church, really. Well, maybe members, too, that their beliefs be understood as a Christian 
tradition. So they want to be understood as a Christian religion, whereas a lot of uh, non-Mormons and a lot of other Christians say that the Mormon church is not Christian. When you walk into a lot of bookstores that are outside of Utah and you ask where the Mormon books are, they send you to the cult section. So <laughs> still a lot of people out there that think the Mormon church is a cult. Of course, the leaders of the church don't want people to think that. Okay, so the current prophet Russell M. Nelson, he said, The Lord has impressed upon my mind, basically a revelation, the importance of the name that he has revealed for his church, even the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. That was one of the names he revealed. <laughs> also in the DNC, Doctrine and Covenants, the, the name the Church of Christ was revealed in 1830. Anyway, uh, we have work before us to bring ourselves in harmony with his will. So he has required that uh, all the Mormon websites change their names, uh, change their addresses, getting rid of the word Mormon wherever he can. Uh, he's been harping on this for a while. He gave a speech, I believe, in General Conference back in 1990, basically saying the same thing. Now that he's prophet, he has more pull, more authority to get this done, and he is getting it done. So probably not going to see any ads saying, oh, we are the Mormons. And he's already gone ahead and changed a lot of the websites and stuff. And Nelson has required that the Mormon Tabernacle Choir change their name. The new name is the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square. It's going to take some getting used to. And I'm sure he doesn't want us to use the nickname or the shortened term MOTAB anymore. And the new name of the Book of Mormon, it is the book formerly known as the Book of Mormon. Ha, ha, ha. Just pulling your leg on this one. They can't really get rid of the name of the Book of Mormon. I guess they could. It would cause a lot of confusion. I don't know what they would name it. The book written by Joseph Smith. I don't know. The book formerly known as the Book of Mormon. I think they're fighting an uphill battle here. They've been called the Mormon Church. Uh, Mormons. Mormonism for so long. Right from the beginning. Because of the Book of Mormon. That's just kind of stuck. It's going to be a long road to kind of erase the term Mormon or to not call them Mormon and Mormonism. I'm just I'm going to still use the term Mormon and Mormonism. Maybe I shouldn't, but I will. It's it's just it's just much easier, it's shorter. Uh anyway, th this guy uh, W Paul Reeve, who's president of the Mormon History Association said, "You can't you cannot scrub Mormon out of Mormon history. You cannot scrub Mormon out of Mormon history. That is true. And that's going to do it for this video. And I thank you for watching Why Did the Mormon Church Change Its Name video.